all the mazes irrigated off centre pivots. It's so easy to grow and high yielding and good gross margins. Dad's been growing it since um, 1960, so there's a little bit of history there. Uh, it's uh, 1756, we've been growing that for three years now. The first year I grew that I only averaged 16.3 um, tonne. The second year was 17.5 and then last year was 18.36. So this is my fourth year in commencement of harvest. We used to be always on um, flood irrigation, on bed farming, and we were on 30 inch row spacing. Just through management, I went over to 36 inch um, yield spacing, which I suppose technically you should be looking at a 10% yield loss. But for me to be able to into row cultivate, it just was more practical to go to 36 inch spacing. and. Once we went onto the centre pivots, we weren't on beds anymore, so it wasn't much of a big deal. Our seeding rate hasn't changed. If anything, I've actually gone up from 80,000 to 82,000. Yeah, well, I've, last year I did um, seeding trials and nitrogen trials, and I uh, did 80,000, 82,000, 85,000 seed trial, and 85 was too much. It lost half a tonne of the hectare. 82 was the optimum, and 80,000 was half a tonne less equivalent to the 85. Yeah, doing different nitrogen trials and stuff like that as well. See, last year 800 was um, the best. It's like I had 7, 720, 750 and 800. So everything this year is blanket 800 except the last pivot. Just because I had urea was cheap and I had it, I just wanted to see where the gross margin plateaus out. Half that pivot's um, done at 900 kilos a hectare and the other half's done at 1,000 kilos a hectare, which is, I think, excessive, but I just need to see where that gross margin falls away. Yeah, well, we put 400 kilos up front, incorporated in the ground and then pre-watered, uh, as well as 250 kilos of MAP. And then um, about V3, we come in and into row cultivate about 40 centimetres deep. There was another 400 kilos of urea. Um, and the roots will sort of stay away from that because it's so hot in that early stages. But um, just prior to tasseling, when it's a huge demand for nitrogen, they'll push back through there. Plus we do ongoing tissue tests and stuff as well because I can fertigate if need be. If there's any sort of deficiency I can um, certainly like sulphur or nitrogen or anything like that I can run it through the pivots. A long time ago um, obviously different varieties and stuff but um, we were probably on the flood only averaging about 10 tonne to the hectare in a good year and using around about 10.5 10 megalitres of water whereas currently last year and this year I'm averaging um, 18 tonne to the hectare just over. Uh, last year's water use was about 6.2 megs to the hectare and this year I've um, used five. As long as you've got the, mo the nutrients up front and then main monitor your water, um, yeah, it's just a simple ease of crop to grow and very easy to harvest. Maize Association of Australia put on an irrigation maize competition sponsored by Netifem and I happened to win that last year with a tonnage of 18.36. Yeah, uh, five thousand dollars for an, towards an overseas trip. There's um, some seminars over there with a few professors that are doing lectures for three or four days, and then um, go and see a couple of the top one percent growers over there that are on irrigation too. Right, it's going to be hard to find irrigators, but even still, like the averages over there are still similar to us, around 18, 19 ton. But there are growers that are hitting that 25 or 6 ton mark, and even if it still is under natural rainfall, not irrigation, I still want to talk to them and see what practices they're using to see what I can't incorporate into my own. Yeah, well, if you're going to grow a crop, you might as well try and get the maximum gross margin out of it. And genetically, the yield potential is 23 to 24 tonne of 1756 grown in glass houses. So obviously this is not a glass house, but the genetic profile's there. So I've just got to find out as far as I can take it.